Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Lulberts, that's our word. Brought to you by Bipcot and Fiendfo. Music by Three Chain Links. And you are? <laughs> I'm a man who pauses in the middle of intros. Hi, I'm Steve Miller Miller. Live in Philadelphia, be decked in one of my finest polo ties for this. The, l- the lulziest of Lulbert days. Yes, in fact, this is the greatest Lulbert day. Uh, how's that bip strong t- uh, treating you, by the way? How's how's the what treating me? The, the bips, bips, the, the bips, strong. the bip. It's on my wrist right now, and I was at a statist institution yesterday, specifically the Community College of Philadelphia, and uh, the one of the instructors came, beheld my wrist, looked at my wrist, and said, "Yo, you got to be careful with those. Somebody sees that, you might get droned." And then he winked and walked out of the room. Oh, jeez. But, uh, but I guess that's okay because which, it also prevents droning at the same time. So, or at least the effects of droning. Yeah. Like you'll get droned, but you'll you'll be more than okay. And also, I we're talking on fiend phone right now. I've been fiend droned so many times that an actual droning I would take as a interesting change of pace. Yeah, you know, like oh, it's a real one, not one that's going to come take away my, my freedom talks. <laughs> but but you but you're still we're still doing it, I guess. So I guess we can explain somebody, what it somebody, is now that it's now that it's available, right? So I'm going to see how yep, well I explain things by having you explain it, because <laughs> maybe that'll maybe that's a little bit of a critique on me if you do it wrong, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the bip strong is basically like a live strong, and whereas other wrist prior rubber wrist accoutrements uh, had healing properties with magnets or pseudoscientific things like that the bip strong will go further than that and will supersede the medical and will actually reroute time and space to make everything correct in your life Mm -hmm. Um, traffic will spontaneously open parking spots open up uh, you get a free copy of the creature from Jekyll Island Uh, whatever Uh, all your wildest libertarian dreams come true upon acquisition of a bip strong. Did I did I get that correct? That's yes. I, I, I'm just telling you about my experience. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know if like you know your mileage may vary. But yeah. well, it's, see now I, I've noticed that. Um, well, originally I thought I was also going to cure cancer or like prevent you from getting cancer and all that stuff, uh, which it does. Which it does. I mean, it clearly does. I mean, I, I don't even have to go into that, right? That's kind of self explanatory When paired with marijuana. It, of course. Yep. You have to smoke marijuana all day, every day, and then dab when you're not smoking marijuana, and then you have a chance of your pip cut curing <laughs> cancer. Yeah, so I thought it was basically going to be like a shortcut, like almost like a Deadpool like thing, but you don't have to do the the stupid experiment thing that sucks with holding your breath. But I found out that it doesn't really prevent anything. You'll still get sick, you'll still get cancer, but it'll just it'll go, "Oh, you got cancer fixed." So, like I had this tooth problem and it's, you know, and I was like, "How come it didn't prevent my tooth thing?" And uh, then I got an infection uh, because of the antibiotics. And it, again, I was like, why didn't it prevent it? But then I realized, like, even though I got these things, it just magically disappeared within a few days. And I'm, I'm good as right as rain. And I still got a pocket full of uh, BIP scripts. <laughs> Thanks, doctor. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't realize that I was on, already on it, right? But um, I, wore my, I, wore my, I wore my BIP strong to, a, to, to the Kensington McDonald's 
uh, which my followers on social media know that the Kensington McDonald's is a frequent source of entertainment for me. Uh, It's where I go. I get my morning coffee. I see my first fight of the day. Uh, Maybe I watch or record a violent interaction between cops and crackheads. Uh, But it's a good way to, like, start your day. You throw on a bolo tie and you... Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you and you and, <laughs> and you walk down to the Kensington McDonald's and you get your coffee. And this morning I walked down there and entirely because I had my bib strung, that's the only thing I could attribute it to. Not a one dope head asked me for money. I mean, uh, unless you want to count the person that was sitting there with a cup and a sign, but I don't even count that yeah, as a that's, direct that's, ask. That's, that's yeah. just I don't count. Yeah. And also so, what, uh, but what you're when basically did, when saying? Did our, when did our crackheads learn to read in this town? <laughs> uh, give me, give me my OG Kensington crackhead who doesn't have time or resources such as markers and cardboard to make a sign. Uh, any respectable crackhead's going to sell their marker for crack and not sit there and make a sign. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so you're basically you're saying you're like the ghetto version of Jeffrey Tucker. You're, you can't afford a bow tie, so you get the bolo tie, uh, and you both still love McDonald's and. Whether you know, instead he he's there for the food, you're there for the fights. So is that is that a fair assessment? You know what? We can curse on this show, so I'm going to tell you my favorite Kensington McDonald story that I've never told on Freedom Fiends for <laughs> the reason that it features a whole bunch of cursing. But but so, you're gonna have to edit this me, out and if you're gonna put this on KHIV, right? right? Okay. He, ex- well, right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I'll know exactly where the cursing comes in the story. Okay. So uh, I'm at the Kensington McDonald's enjoying the culinary delights like the proto Jeffrey Tucker that I am, and I go there. And I get my, they give you like the little empty cup because it's one of these fountain deals where you go and you get your own drink and there's free refills, what have you. That's the beauty of the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. Uh, Under socialism, they central plan how much drink you get. Under capitalism, there's free refills. And the woman gives me the cup and I turn to go toward the fountain. And there's these two women, huge women. We're not talking small women. We're talking like... Probably each of them, like, at least six feet tall and just enormous. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, physique of a beach ball, uh, huge. And heavily tattooed head to toe, just looking very ghetto Kensington, and both of them huge. And the one sees the other one, and the first words out of her mouth are, Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? <laughs> and the other one looks, like, a little confused, and so she repeats herself a little bit louder so everyone in the dining room could hear her. Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? And I, like, start to laugh to myself, and the other one responds to her, Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him, bitch? And this goes back, Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? And all I want is a lemonade. (laughs) Uh... And they're standing there blocking both of them because they're so huge and because they're using, like, these really angular, really fast-moving hand motions and just repeating themselves. Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? Bitch, where's your man so I can fuck him? And I thought, maybe if you change your approach, you'd get the dude's location. Maybe if you'd be (laughs) like, hey, uh, your man left something at my house and I'd like to go deliver it to his work site. You'd be a little better than if you were so circumspect that uh, a little more circumspect than if you just laid your intentions out right out when you were asking for his location. Like if someone tell me, like, yo, Steve, where's your sumo so I can fuck him? I would be like, yo, I'm not telling you because you're going to go fuck my sumo. But if someone was like, yo, Steve, where's your sumo so I could go give him free buffet tickets and make him all the more deliciously plump, then I would probably comply. You got it's it's a it's a stick and a carrot that you got to go with when you're trying to find when you're trying to cuck somebody else's man, and that 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 came down to cuck. we didn't have a word for it because it was only 2012. Yeah, uh, but this was this was extreme cuckoldry that I was witnessing at the Kensington McDonald's. <laughs> well, they did have a word for it. It's just cuck was not in. We, people didn't say cuck like they you know replace articles with the word in this day like a an and the gets replaced with cuck 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 yeah oh uh, cook 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 yeah like uh, b- i mean before the whole cuck whole thing was i was like i kind of knew what it was because i used to go to red porn uh red tube and i i don't anymore because masturbation is terrible <clears throat> but uh and i used to see that stuff and i was like what is this fucking cuck hold shit like why is why is the dude just watching why isn't he Tag teaming, whatever. I, it's, apparently, this is not a genre of porn I'm interested in. I didn't think it was like a lifestyle. 
And and then like someone was like telling me, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm not really into that kind of porn. I was like, it's oh, it's not just porn; it's a real thing. And, like, and I looked it up, and I was like, this is terrible, you know, this is terrible. And then you know, I, I immediately immediately uh, joined the alt right and um, started voting for Donald Trump. I mean, he wasn't even running yet, right? And I was still voting for him. So no, I wrote him in. Yeah. I was I was I was no, alt right before alt right was a thing. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. You you went back. You said you you saw the Celebrity Apprentice, and you said this is who I need appointing the head of the Department of the Interior. Yep. Yes, because I yeah. knew he was going to uncuck the country. I, I was already on board. I was already <laughs> I was polling before poll. Poll poll is always right, but Jim was right first. Right. Right. Make America uncucked again. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! Is there a is there a web page called U.S. Uncucked? That's a parody of us uncut because that that should be a mission that we need to run with a quickness if if it doesn't exist if us uncucked already exists then that's fine whatever but if it doesn't there's a fortune to be made and by fortune i mean fortune in dogecoin yeah the, well there's there's i just looked it up there's um it, when i when i typed it in as i typed it in as one word um and it said did you mean america untucked <laughs> like, what? Um, and it says the GOs, GOP establishment. Uh, I have never seen dot 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 slash vote. Uh, and then I guess it says we're going to make America uncucked again. <laughs> Graf- Graphics dot com. Uh, so apparently, I don't think it is. I could do a who is search, but if yeah. you want to buy no, it, I you better I buy it before I it. upload this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think I would just make it a make it a face beef page. Oh, okay. Uh, more that because because if you, I mean where's the, where's the best ass hurt going to come from, Jim? Oh, it's, it's going to come from social, yeah, social media. And I've learned this today. Well, and it, not even not even Twitter because people get mad for like a period of about four or five tweets on Twitter, and then they're on to something else. Uh, they can't hold people in paragraphs of ass hurt uh, quite like quite like quite like the Zuckerbergs can. So you're saying that the the relationship between uh, time and ass hurt is uh, is a uh, is uh, equally proportional to the amount of characters allowed in a post. I don't know if correlation proves causation, but I can tell you that uh, the 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 spicier memes that I have, the ones that have a uh, high spice content, uh, tend to tend to get a lot more paragraphs on the internet from people on Facebook than Twitter rants. Uh, maybe I'm just not good at causing Twitter rants. I haven't been like a huge Twitter so. Uh, I was speaking with a fellow at work the other day, and he made a very good comparison, which was he was like, well, you are you grew up in the 80s, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, okay. He goes, so how we had records in the 80s is pretty much how people had social media today. Like you listened to what you wanted to listen to, and you didn't listen to anything anybody else liked, and that was pretty much that. And Facebook, I feel, is Michael Jackson, where it's like widely popular. Everybody uses it. Uh, some people do it like on a much deeper level than others, but <laughs> it's just like pretty widely known. Whereas Twitter's like Prince. It's like kind of this niche market, a uh, lot of black people, and uh, it's weird and sexual and kind of just shorter. And it's more of a concept that they're going for versus face beef, which is more just for the masses. Mm. But. Yeah, there are people that would argue that Prince was a better musician than Michael Jackson, and you know there are people that would argue it's a better social media platform, what have you. But I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty, 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 pretty wise. And he's a big Buddhist and also a statist, but a non-voter. So on the off chance you're listening to this, Carl, uh, bless your grind and thank you for contributing to that. One thing that upsets me about Twitter is that Mia Khalifa is never naked on it. I mean, every other porn star uploads constantly pictures of them naked. I don't follow any of them. I, I, the only one I follow is Mia Khalifa, but she doesn't do it. And I'm just hoping that maybe she would, and she wouldn't do it. So I'm like, I, I don't even I got know why a- I Twitter anymore. <laughs> Samson, uh, Sam, my friend, my friend Samson, Samson, if you're listening, bless your grind. Uh, got into a conversation with me yesterday about how his favorite porn star apparently was feeling the burn, and that's not like in a work-related mm. injury, but uh, she, she is a Bernie Sanders supporter. Only one and I looked up my, And yeah. I looked up my favorite porno stars, and it turns out that Yoshi Kawasaki, who's a French citizen, <laughs> endorsed Le Pen, who is the crazy far-right like candidate in France. So uh, luckily, 
Yeah. Of course, by French standards, what makes you right wing being like a Democrat in the U.S.? Uh, but, yep, at least at least when I'm watching uh, a Japanese man get nailed, I can sleep assured knowing that he, he will be a tool of the French socialists. Yeah, he's totally uncucked. <laughs> he, it's not even U.S. uncucked, though, because he's in France. Yeah, my, I don't even follow my favorite porn star on Twitter. Um uh, I don't know why I ended up following Mia Khalifa, but I did. My favorite is uh, Cleo Valentine. She's a punk rock girl covered in tattoos. Um, yeah, I'd wreck it. Nah, yeah. For 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 me, it's for me, it's Yoshi Kawasaki all day long. He's uh, especially now that he's like been working out more and he's like bigger and beefier and bulkier. Yeah. Oh, love he's me, he's a sumo me some Yoshi. And, and he's he, well, no. Because he's not fat, like, uh, but there aren't fat Asian porn stars. Like, you, why not? It's like one-off videos, because the the entire market would be me and two dudes that look like Jerry Sandusky. <laughs> uh, it's not like a widely anyone can tell you this. Like, nobody wants to have sex with like a big fat Asian dude. Okay, hell, I don't even have sex with a big fat Asian dude. The dude I'm dating is half Vietnamese, half Mexican. So he's like got the body, got the body of a Mexican busboy and the face of a Vietnamese nail technician, and yeah. So even even I can't go full sumo, and I, and I I've built a lifestyle, I've built a, a personality around it, and you know, yeah. whatever. This is this is like Augustus Invictus having having a Latina wife. <laughs> <laughs> Little deep cut for my all right fashy boys listening at home. Oh God. <laughs> I don't even know where to follow that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, you know, you could move to like Hawaii or uh, Vegas or uh, do, you have, do you have, is there a Chinatown over there? there I'm sure there's got to be some. Guam. That's that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have to go to those island countries. I would countries. love to move to Guam. Oh, any, I think any, yeah. uh, any of those Asian countries because Asian countries, um, for, or Asian countries, excuse me, uh, those island countries <laughs> or islands, uh, Hawaii, Guam, all those, um, is because it's cheaper to get McDonald's than it is groceries. So everyone eats McDonald's all the time and gets you super fat. That's that's why they're so big. Um, yeah, yeah, you you'd be in heaven. I, I'm 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 in heaven in Kensington. See, here's the thing: if you go and move to the crappiest place on earth and then find a way. To make it enjoyable, by God, the entire planet's paradise after that point. I mm -hmm. went to Detroit, and I was like, you know what? This place really isn't that bad because I've only seen two people dying of crack overdoses on the street. <laughs> if you could, if you could live here and hack it, and you know, make a make a good time of it, by God, the entire world is just heaven, uh, filled with filled with big fat Asian men, no less. You know. Uh, and great food at the Kensington McDonald's. Uh, all you have to do is just find some wife's man so you can fuck him, and then you're pretty much fine. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's two things we need we need to cover before we go on. Uh, one we did we should have done. Well, the there's one. one I have I have one thing I want to put on the list as well. But go ahead. Okay, so so the first thing is it's it's a new month. It's April, and it's Flag Tree Month. And as you know, we're not really technically libertarians anymore. We decided to uh, join our local chapter of Cat Muff. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we're going to use the uh, the Noam Chomsky, that don't call this anarchism flag for this month's flag. Um, I'm not going to put it on black block because, you know, we're not capitalists anymore. We don't want money. Um, and I secondly, have a, I have a legit question. OK, I have a legit question. <laughs> Do you want to have a flag sent to Philadelphia? Uh, I can send it back to you if afterward, if you want or whatever. But we have a Chomsky mural here. Where there oh, is an man. entire side of a building that is bedecked with Noam Chomsky, and I could, I we could get like a promo image of me standing in front of the Chomsky mural with the flag. That could be funny. <laughs> but I remember I was asked to perform at uh, a fundraiser for the Chomsky mural, and I was like, I have something else going. Going on. They're like, where are you performing? I'm like, oh, it's not performing. I'm like, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, circumcising myself with a broken Coke bottle. Uh, that's what I'm doing instead of performing at your Chomsky mural fundraiser because I could only admit. All right. So here we'll, we'll cover what I wanted to cover out of the way, which is how to effectively heckle a comedy show okay. in the current year. We we give <laughs> we give good information to people here on the Walberts and having just been recently heckled, I, I'm well averse 
well, well abreast of the current methods used in heckling. So uh, I didn't Chomsky fundraiser because I knew f- for certain that the people there would have been full on activists. And activism, as I've said repeatedly, is the opposite of comedy. It is not humor. Uh, and it is not something that lends itself to humor. And the people that love activism tend to hate comedy, whether they realize it or not. And they they have this belief that if you're laughing, if you are doing comedy or anything of the sort, uh, it's useless unless you're using it for some greater cause. And if you don't have like some activist bent to your comedy, then you're wasting your fucking time by just going out there and uh, – just making people laugh. I mean, you're just wasting your potential. I mean, you could make this about the uh, income inequality or whatever. Uh, and they, they have all sorts of designs for how to make your comedy unfunny. And they want to come up to you and they want to pitch it to you and they don't want to laugh during your show. And these people are completely near useless as a comedian and you don't want to be around them. So I said no to doing the Chomsky mural fundraiser, but my absence didn't stop the mural from being made. So the mural's up, uh, and if you want me to take a picture in front of it, I will. But I got I got heckled <laughs> on Thursday, and I started doing comedy in 2006. I was a Christian comedian when I started. Uh, now I do regular, you know, sumo sexual comedy. Is this, is this kind of like and one of those things like sumo sexual comedy? What, what's, That's a common thing. What, what's G, uh, and, Jesus' favorite music? Uh, Nine Inch Nails. Is that what you're gonna? Is that is that Christian comedy? Getting heckled has okay. Eight. So. <laughs> It's generally off in Christian comedy. Are you okay. there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't hear me again. Ugh. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. All right, there we go. Doot doot. Toot toot. So it's so so uh how 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 heckling has changed from 20 2006 to present. Uh so it's still generally people that are offended. Uh when I would do Christian comedy, obviously there were a lot of people in the audience who were getting offended by various things and my jokes weren't even dirty then, but you know, uh, religion is, you could argue, a form of activism, and activism is the opposite of comedy, as I mentioned earlier. And these people were on a crusade, although although closer to a literal crusade than most activists, uh, and that would be that. So years pass, and it, whereas it was once that the main people heckling me were conservatives and Christians, and uh, they were concerned that I was upsetting the social order with my you know, jokes about the order the books of the Bible are in or whatever. Uh, Someone got really mad that I made a joke about what order the books of the Bible are in and that I implied that they should maybe be in a different order. Oh, my God, the heresy. Uh, And now it's people that are on social media all day and are very liberal. And it used to be liberal people would want to come up to you after the show, congratulate you on being homosexual and somehow still managing to be alive. And, oh, my God, you're such an inspiration. And I want to introduce you to some ugly gay person I know because maybe you'll have a romantic John and you'll want to be around somebody that's uh, that never laughs and isn't any fun and is also physically hideous and uh, isn't Asian or fat. So maybe you'll get into all that. And... uh now they're now those very same people are no longer supportive and they're all in on the offended train and what's changed is how you approach it so it used to be you'd be like hey man that joke was fucked up or whatever mm-hmm. and you just shout out and you'd say da 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 and then you'd storm out now you stay and you don't say you didn't like a joke that's kid stuff uh, that's for beginners. Mm-hmm. The way you phrase it, if you didn't like a joke in the current year, is you say, that joke made me feel unsafe. This goes especially <laughs> if you're a woman, if you're a woman, and also especially if you're an improv cuck. If you are somebody who does improv comedy, which I consider a cult, and the Cult Awareness Network should look into improv. Uh, if you're If you're doing that, then... Uh, yeah, what you say is that joke made me feel unsafe. And the reason you you favor that joke made me feel unsafe versus I didn't like that joke 
is that joke made me feel unsafe is irrefutable. You can defend a joke. You could say, oh, well, you could explain a joke. You can't. There's no explaining away what someone feels. You can't refute it. You can't just be like, oh, well, you shouldn't feel you're, you're not feeling unsafe or you're ridiculous because uh, then you're victim blaming. And then you you can have like a whole week weekend later, and the person heckling gets their last laugh on Facebook now, which sucks. Yeah. And how long of that soliloquy would I give without anybody there? <laughs> can you not hear me again? Oh God! Did it just come in one big thing? No, I I heard the whole thing. You're good. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't talking. I was just letting you on a roll. You're good. Um. Yeah, okay, and the other thing that I needed to talk about, which, that was good, by the way, uh, I clapped, I'm going to clap. Did, it did make you feel unsafe? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm safe, but it was, it, was a good, it was a good rant. I clapped. All right, cool. You should have said please clap, but I'm going to clap in any way. Please clap. Okay. I, I, ironic, ironically enough, I have to go remove sausage from the oven. I'll be back in 10 seconds. Oh, that's what, that's what all your boyfriends say, right? <laughs> There we go. You ever look at meat from the rest of the day and think, God, why can't you be more like breakfast meats? Breakfast meats are just the best. Uh, bacon, sausage, even the crappy pork roll that's popular like on the eastern seaboard, I don't necessarily mind. Scrapple's an abomination and from Satan and should be banished and should be physically removed from society. And I'll soon be coming up with a list of meats that should be physically removed. And at the top will be Scrapple. Which you might not even have where you're listening to this from, and you should count your blessings because it's a horrible meat, and it's a horrible breakfast meat, and it's gooey in the middle, and who the hell wants a meat that's gooey in the middle? Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, no, Scrapple's <sighs> absolute ass. And I don't, I don't care how long I live in Philadelphia, you'll never, ever get me to come around on Scrapple. Uh, you know, the, I, I love the Philadelphia 76ers. They're my favorite team. It remind, they remind me of the shitty teams I grew up watching in Cleveland. Uh, you know, you've got me on, they got me on biking. I never considered myself a biker, but since all the streets were built for buggies, uh, they've got this extra lane. So it makes it really easy to bike everywhere. Also biking's free and I'm a cheap bastard. Uh, so, but yeah, I'll never, ever come around on Scrapple. It's just never going to happen. I hate it. Absolutely fucking hate it. I still don't know what Scrapple is. <laughs> Count your blessings. Yeah. Yeah. Hope that it never reaches Vegas. Let's hope they don't build build a shitty Philadelphia, Pennsylvania casino, right? You know, a, a short drive from the New York, New York casino. And it's got like a mini Independence Hall and, you know, like a mini custody dispute. And, you know, bitch, where's your man on the strip so I can fuck him, etc. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and then they serve fucking cheesesteaks and scrapple. Yeah. That would be the worst thing that could possibly happen to your town. Yeah. Just kidding. Uh, another another thing built for LA douchebags is the worst thing that could happen for your town. Oh, dude, yeah. oh God. <laughs> I know about your LA douchebag problem in Vegas. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Well, I, I lived in LA for a while, and that was one of the reasons why I left. Not the reason, but you know, high prices, uh, douche, douchebags, and um, uh, and then traffic. Those were the three things I was like, eh, this is too much. I can't handle this anymore. Uh, oh, but, traffic would enrage me. But, yeah, but, but before before we we go too much further, there's the other thing that I said on the other show, uh, and I started. What happened was like I was taking Norco's, and like it's kind of hard to make a great libertarian argument when you're like just feeling the effect of your very first Norco that you've had in like years. You know, because especially when you're sensitive to that stuff, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to like weed. I'm so sensitive to it, like even like a couple hits off some swag will get me like, huh. What? Well, anyways, um, I said that like, oh, that poor people have it great here in America. Blah blah blah. And I didn't really explain. Some it people that are well. that way with memes. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't explain it that well. And the only thing that I need to add to that, like, it wasn't untrue. It was just that, like, I didn't explain it that uh, well. Is just that just the the vast wealth of society when it happens, uh, poor people benefit, and that's why the poor people here. I mean, live terrible, horrible lives while they have. Things that were luxuries, what, 30 years ago, like microwave or 40 years ago, like microwaves, refrigerators, um, you know, when people st like I an icebox was still luxury. Yeah. But anyways, I hope to. OK, yeah. uh, Freedom <laughs> Fiends, Freedom Fiends, record Freedom Fiends records from one to three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Lawbirds, for those of you who don't know, is often recorded during the day. And Only for you. The for, day for the other for the other other guys, they like to record at night. And then I render once. Oh, well, I'm at work, but anyway, they always come out at yeah. they always come out at night. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
during the day opens the possibility for us doing a Lulberts episode, and then I literally get interrupted by people knocking on my door trying to offer me Obama phones. Because <laughs> they, because when you live in a shitty neighborhood, people go door to door, bilingual usually, offering Obama phones, uh, so you can get all Obama'd up. <laughs> The Obama phone, does it call anybody else or just the White House? Or like a White House recording? Yeah. yeah. And uh, when or, because I live in Philly and a lot of my, a lot of, were you done talking? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'll just, maybe they had like big ears as antennas or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, so a lot of my, a lot of my feed is liberal Democrats because it's Philadelphia. And yeah. I'm friends with the people that live around here. And one of them posted a picture of the first family the other day. And I know you're not supposed to make fun of the president's kids. And, oh, my God, it's so secret. And how dare you make fun of the first family? But that one daughter looks like she has a job by Mitt Romney. That's all I'll say. <laughs> uh, and secondly, wait, people wait, were posting this but, picture. Of, but we used to make fun of Chelsea Clinton, like, all the time. Remember how homely she used to be? I mean, she, she, be, she got well, like, right. and, afterwards. And, but everybody, I mean, and, and everybody got all self-righteous about that, too. I remember when really? it happened. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody, that was the first time people were all over. Lim Limbaugh's TV show got canceled because he made fun of Chelsea. Really? Uh, and yeah, everybody, yeah. It's always been like a little thing that you can get all mad about. Uh, anyway, so it's it's all liberal Democrats, like, that are mostly my Philadelphia friends, and they post a picture of the first family, and the hoteps get all excited. Do you know what a hotep is? No. A hotep is a black person who gives any black person a huge amount of credit just for being black and alive. Like, oh. these are the people that defended Bill Cosby when, like, even 88 women are there, and they're like, oh, they're just trying to take him down because he was going to build the first positive black TV network. He was about to buy NBC. Like, da-da-da-da. <laughs> Whereas there's no, like credible accounts of that was going to happen. It was like apparently an exclusive to the Hotep News Network. Uh, and so they post this picture of the first family and all these Hoteps are all, uh, oh, what a beautiful family. What a wonderful family. And I wrote, well, yeah, like, and what a diverse family because you've got two men, two women, and two dogs, and the dogs are so representative of the family that they're half black, half white, and they had their penises chopped off. Oh, clearly shit. implying that Michelle, Ob <laughs> clearly that implying <laughs> that Michelle Obama is a transsexual. Oh man! And good now thing we're I not on the I'm air. We would have lost like five stations. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but now, yeah, we, we now there's be, a I comedy guess. club. I was banned from a comedy club that doesn't exist as a result of this. Nice. Uh, there's a comedy club in Philadelphia called The Laugh House, a primarily black club uh, on South Street, and it closed in 2013. And there's one promoter that still like does shows under the under the Laugh House day, but he does like maybe two shows a year. And these shows, which were never going to book me anyway, have now specifically banned me. So it's going about going just about as well as these left wing boycotts that you see. So. Yep, because I because I hold dangerous political positions on Michelle Obama's penis, I'm unable to perform at Laugh Cat at uh, Laugh House. Laugh Cast is a good production company. They make uh, podcasts in Philly. If you're ever bored, uh, l a f f c a s t dot com. You can find the Passive Aggressive Hour, my other non political show. Okay, well, you still doing? What, what, didn't you do like another libertarian show for a while? Is that still a thing? I tried listening Wait, to it. It was almost like bad audio hour. Mike Salvi's world? No, 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 no. It was another one I saw because I saw the James Babb. Uh, I found the babe, uh, babe, uh, babe that I found James Babb's uh, YouTube channel, and then he had like some thing where you were like, you were talking about being a gutter faggot, and you had like this podcast with some other guy, and you're doing a speech at the Libertarian Convention or whatever. What was it called? Oh, that was the Panic Hour. The Panic Hour. And oh snap, you want? So it was a conspiracy show. I actually have my Panic Hour T-shirt directly in front of me. Nice. I use it to clean up spills. <laughs> and quote unquote the show spills. was the, the show <laughs> the show was intentional or unintentional yes. the the <laughs> the shows themselves were good uh i ha still to this day endorse going about maybe five to eight episodes back on the panic hours feed and just listen to our shows on like sandy hook or whatever because they're funny and like we take all these conspiracy things and we lampoon them but the problem is that nikki allen poe and a Poe, the 
activist with whom I had the podcast became more and more. He started off as a comedian and then he became more and more of an activist as we as we kept doing the show. And as he became more of an activist, he started surrounding himself with these other activists who started putting these ideas in his head of, you know, you're just wasting this. If you're just making people laugh, you need to use this and go make a difference. (laughs) And we started having people on to spend an hour and a half talking about jury nullification, which I I, I, I don't give a fuck how you feel about jury nullification. Listening to people describe the shit is the most fucking boring thing on earth. And I told him not to do this, and he did it anyway. And as the show got worse and worse, he became more and more convinced that the show was going to be his ticket to fame and stardom. Because, uh, you know, podcast. Liber- libertarian. Yeah, of course, libertarian celebritarianism is – that's the way you want to live your life, right? And, no. and this, was, this, was, this was how I, got, I became divorced from libertarian activism as well because he – we did this event called Smoke Down Prohibition where they were just going to go smoke weed in public, basically, was the whole point of it. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> Kokesh was there, and Kokesh got arrested at the same event, and uh, they went to jail together. They got, they raised defense funds, and then they lived off the defense fund for three months instead of using it for legal defense Ugh. because, and this, this is a direct quote, that's what professional activists do. Ah, boo. And... Yep, boo. Going out, intentionally getting arrested, and then raising a defense fund. And then after Kokesh got out of jail, and this is the one thing I make all the Kokesh defenders answer for anytime someone tells me they like Kokesh. Kokesh, when he got out of jail, came back to Poe's house. We're sitting there. We're smoking grass like miscreants. And (laughs) Kokesh explains that while they were in jail, they came up with this concept that they're going to monetize activism – let that sink in for a second. They're going to monetize activism by charging franchise fees. And I said, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to hold if we're going to hold protests for all the causes that we talk about on Adam versus the Man, and we're going to charge people in various cities a franchise fee, and then we'll show up and we'll uh be there and we'll speak at their protest and it'll be officially licensed as Adam vers- as an Adam versus the band protest event or what have you and we'll just travel the country and we'll make our money charging franchise fees and holding weed protests and getting high and I said okay couple questions oh my god uh, <laughs> yep couple questions uh, franchise fees yeah <laughs> for free speech <laughs> yep for a protest Correct. For a weed protest, you expect that habitual marijuana users are going to save up the money and pay you to do something that's free. Uh, And it was at that point that I realized that charging for things that are free somewhere else is like a core celebritarian trait. Uh, They'll make software that already exists for free. They'll tell they'll explain things via podcasts that have already been explained umpteen number of times and they'll charge you retroactively for it in the form of a please donate but yeah charging for things that are free is a core celebritarian principle. yeah and if you don't do that and live off your defense fund you ain't shit in my book and come back when you can get a dui and then cry about how you were in jail or whatever yeah so man that sounds like a bigger scam than bip strong i mean no bip strong is not a scam it's not, not, a, scam. not a scam no it's not a scam it totally works it actually works it doesn't actually work um, I highly recommend you buy all of them. No, but, I'm just um, saying no crackheads asked me for money on the way to McDonald's yeah, today. Exactly, it's, yeah. uh, correlation doesn't prove causation, but no crackheads asked me for money today, and that is a Kensington miracle. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Say, I'm not saying that it that it will prevent this, but you know, we're just asking questions. We're just asking questions, right? Yep. Like, wh- why doesn't my tooth hurt? Ever since I put my bip strong on, you know, like how come you don't get asked for money on the way to your, on the McDonald's, you know? Uh, these these correlations cannot be ignored. We're just asking questions, bro. Just asking questions. Uh, the next that, time a homeless hurt, dude, d- but that actually hurts me. Like to like I I podcast right, and I ask for money, but I I I it's not like I I don't I'm not going to quit my day job. Like even if like I'm rolling in cash, if I roll in cash tomorrow, like if some reason I get like a, a million dollars in donations tomorrow, I'll, I'll just turn off my t- donations feed because I do not want to become one of these people where my livelihood depends on like sucking off the the uh, the dicks the metaphorical dicks of all these people. I mean, you may not like that, uh, 
granted if home you know if they're sumos but i don't <laughs> i don't want to like like oh and say like oh i have an unpopular opinion now and then you know there goes my income which I do have a lot of unpopular opinions. We can get into jury nullification because I am a staunch anti-advocate of, of uh, anarchists engaging in jury nullification. I mean, if you, if you want to convince an anarchist oh, to do and it or I, anyone else. I like how it's, yeah, the, yeah. it's the only fucking feature of the legal system that libertarians and anarchists fucking understand. I'm sorry. I'm sounding like <laughs> using the F word, every other word. And I'm going to have to dump well, all of this I, later I, before, I, before I can put it on the radio. However, i got to dump that. Uh, I'm actually going to dump that word, by the way. <laughs> I'm actually gonna yeah, dump that word. Yeah, go ahead. That. I'll dump that as well. Yeah. But it's the it's the only feature of the of the legal system people know uh, is jury nullification. Like, why would you refute the state's claims against you when you can instead give a speech about how you feel the law should be? Yeah. Ridiculous. Well, no, no, Absolutely no. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, there's a place for it. There actually is a place for there it. There is. But sure, and it and it never happens. But the people who are in favor of jury nullifications are the people who are strong opposition to voting because they feel that voting is a waste of time, that the chances of it actually working uh, are null, and you're supporting the uh, and you're supporting the estate by engaging in in this opportunity, which you can easily leave. Which, if you're an anarchist. All of which applies far more, far worse, far worse, because one, like you're wasting time, whether than going to a polling station or a caucus and spending, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes to to, to vote. Uh, you're spending months up to years, depending if it's a criminal case, which which that's what you want to do. Uh, you don't want to, you know, go into a civil case <laughs> and overturn it. Like, oh yeah, like we should totally override the laws about contractual obligations. No, uh, <laughs> like it's, it's only going to be victimless crimes that you want to do it to. Secondly, yeah, um, you're you're way, uh, you're not all victimless crimes. Like if you yeah. have a child pornography case, you don't want to be like, oh, there's no way this state's going to be able to find 12 people who oppose child exploitation yeah. <laughs> uh yeah they are yeah secondly um uh what was the other thing that i said um oh so you're 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 legitimizing the state by participating you as an anarchist can get out of jury duty so easy the only thing you need to say is i'm an anarcho-capitalist and i find this jury to, uh, you, i find this courtroom to be illegitimate and it is actually true. You're not breaking the law. You're not. You're not uh, engaging in any kind of hate speech that will get you into contempt of court because they will ask well, you yeah, about your political affiliations. Speech. Yeah, they will ask you about your political affiliations. And if you lie, you're actually, uh, you're actually, uh, you're actually in contempt of court. Or what is what is it? you're committing perjury. perjury. You can actually go to yeah. jail for trying to do this as an anarchist. And and third and third um, third of all, you know, the chances of you actually getting a law overturned. Uh, through jury nullification, uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, they're going to root you out. If they if they even suspect that you know anything about this stuff, they're going to kick you off a jury. And being a libertarian, that's you know we we are the discriminating class when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to juries. Like we are, we are the ones get we're the ones sent to the back of the bus every time. Oh, you're a libertarian, man. Oh, you're an ANCAP. Get the hell out of here now. <laughs> we don't want you people in here. But yeah, jury nullification. I, if you if you if you are against voting for those reasons, but are for jury nullifications for those reasons, you don't realize it, but you are you are being hypocritical. I gotta call you out. Uh oh. The worst way. Uh oh. <laughs> the worst possible way. Uh oh. I'm calling you out, James Bab. First pot oh, beef. Uh, First little low beef. Okay. Now yeah. I'm triggered. Now yeah. I'm, now I'm triggered. I hate the expression "call someone out" because it is it's basically a creative way of saying liberal bitching. Uh, that's that's what the term has has has, right. has fallen right. to. Uh, and also, have you ever noticed that a lot of callouts end with calls for additional callouts? Like he. He's wrong for doing X, and more people need to call him out on it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's not doing anything. It's just it. complaint. Call him out. Call him out right now, or I'm kicking you off the law. No. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, I've been uh, called out. I, I'm calling you out for calling, not calling him out. I'm calling you out. It's meta call outs here. On the Lawbirds tonight. <laughs> you know what? Instead of calling, instead of calling someone out, how about calling them up? Yeah. How about saying like, "Hey, what did you what did you mean?" Or so like, maybe uh, not just instantly get triggered all the time. No, I saw no, this no, meme. No, no, no. Everything has to be conflict. Everything has to be conflict. Every. Yeah. Well, the world's against you because you're a victim. Yeah. There can't there can be any would, room for in, in misinterpretation. It has to be. It has to be deliberate lies and and hypocrisy. I'm calling you I, out. So, 
<laughs> yesterday I yesterday I saw a meme. You'll you'll be shocked to learn. And it was this this is a this it was this, this amazing. It was this big big fat Cambodian uh bear cub that shares this meme. And he's been going to the gym lately and getting that like muscle bear kind of look to him and looking all Cambodian but looking great. If you're listening, Peter, bless your grind. Uh anyway, so he posts a meme and it shows a picture of this fat person on a treadmill with like sweat all over them. And it says making fun of a fat person at the gym is like making fun of a like illiterate at a school or something like that. And I thought, okay, but this is a meme created in response to a problem that I don't think actually exists. I don't think there's a lot of people who make fun of fat people at the gym. I think people go into the gym fat already hypersensitive and thinking that people are looking down on them for whatever reason. And then they find the slightest little thing and then use that as an excuse to get triggered. And everybody at the gym is such a dick. I can't go back. It's like a confirming what they already believe sort of thing. And I see this meme yesterday and then I go to the gym. I bang out my 5k, you know, do whatever. And I'm going down the stairs and I pass this woman on the staircase, larger woman, and I pass her by, and it's like, it was cold, so we had our coats on. And I pass her by, and I say, excuse me. And I, like, my coat brushed her coat. And I I brush her by, I say, excuse me. I continue walking up the stairs, and then I hear from behind me, are you serious? And I turn around, and she goes, oh, my fucking God. And I'm like, huh? She's like, you just bumped into me. I'm like, right. And I said, excuse me. And now I'm moving on with my day. And then she goes, oh, my fucking God. And then goes down the stairs. And it's like, yo, you're the kind of person who made this meme. And you're the kind of person who sucks. Yep. That story didn't have a very climactic ending. No. Like, oh, my fucking <laughs> God. Yeah. Next next time, push people down the stairs. Yeah. yeah. When I retell that story, I'll have murdered her uh okay. had trump yeah. put her in a catapult and throw her over the wall uh, I don't and know. of course that she, she of course made animal memes she but she was oh. she was a she was a mass purveyor of animal memes so of course this was this was deserving right if she had had you gave her a helicopter no and you gave her a helicopter ride the helicopter but, ride and that's what happened <laughs> you 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 did god's here's work, my son. list of memes that need to be physically removed from society I've I've made a list of memes that need to be physically removed from society. Okay, Number okay, one, so animal okay. memes. So an, two, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about animal memes. Why do animal memes? Why is that grounds for physical removal? Because they're memes for people who don't know how to meme, and this doesn't apply to all animal memes, but it applies to ninety five percent of animal memes. Uh, is is, lol, it, is are lol cats considered in this group? Yep. You would consider lol cats to be. Swag memes. Has, lo ha has lol cats changed in like the two years since I've seen lol cats? Have they developed like? No, I think lol cats have kind of like tapered off, and now you're. I think the only real lol cats stuff you see, they don't really have. Oh, I is want cheeseburgers shit. A lot of it now is just that's kind of like that's retarded. That's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. But at the time, you have to admit they were great. In no, the, I do not. You don't. I 100 do not have to admit that, Jim Jesus. You're wrong. I'm sorry. You're wrong. No. Oh, okay. no. Because because I will that say was I will say that today, triggered. today <laughs> if if I saw a lawbirds uh, lawbirds if I saw a law cats today I would be I would be like oh come on what is this like 2006 let's let's move on now 2006 2007 that shit was awesome and 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 when they were talking about making a no. law cats uh, programming language that was i was like I, that will actually get me to learn how to program and of course it never happened and i'll never learn to program but um, no but now now yeah now now i'll agree with you that it's terrible but i'm sorry no at at its time it, it was it was top it was top kick Okay, well, let's let's talk about this. Why why is the <laughs> lolcats and the I can has cheeseburger shit? Funny? No, no, the, the, because the cheeseburger it's a fucking the, cat that can't speak in, in, in proper grammar. Yes. Oh my god, the hilarity! Yes. Oh Jesus Christ, of man, course. that's the most hysterical thing I've ever heard. Hey, 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 I've got an idea. How about how about we have like a snake, right? And he's got devious impulses. Or perderp. Oh, I know what we could call it. We could call it the fucking Garden of Eden in the Bible. Uh <laughs> 
like the shit is not creative. But it's like no, if you no, can't no, make no. Other if the memes, snake you make if... fucking animal memes because you're a swag level no, human no. being and you should be <laughs> fucking memeing. I'm sorry. If if the if the snake had some sort of lisp or something, then it would be fun. Aud- <laughs> but only in 2007. Like start, I, but only in 2007. I, it would not work today. It would I, not work today. I will agree with you that it will not work today. But in 2007, I, a snake with a lisp would have been would have been a top tier meme. It would have been a top tier meme. I started off. I started off this conversation joking. I started off this conversation joking about being turned, but I could actually feel my blood pressure rise and like myself getting fucking agitated. Oh, I, 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 I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can blow the lid right now by saying just a very simple sentence. Well, we can agree to disagree. Yeah, that didn't do it. that. That that set my blood pressure spiking another ten points. <laughs> All right, so number but, two, number so, two. What's number two? So <laughs> we're we're number, never going to agree. Number, number one is animal memes. They need to be physically removed from society. Okay. Uh, number two is Bernie memes. It, they, it, we're way past peak Bernie memes, folks. Were uh, Bernie, you had your, was Bernie memes ever funny? There were a couple. Okay, I've got a couple that I have in my fumes folder. Fumes is an acronym that stands for frequently used memes in case of emergency shortage. Okay. Uh and I, there's a couple Bernie memes I keep in there that were like the one of Bernie hugging, uh, like the one of Bernie hugging the cat that says, "If elected, I will make Nico Atsumi real my first day in office." <laughs> that's fucking funny, because uh, that sounds like the kind of shit Bernie would promise. Like, yeah. ah, there's an app. We should make it real. <laughs> we no longer let the top ten percent, the top one percent, not let uh, Miku Miku be real. We won't allow it. Anyways, go ahead. We're going to th- mega necos th- for every for every waifu. Is waifu is that how you say a wa- Oh, it's waifu. Okay, every waifu. Go ahead. You're, you're, you slid you slid into Trump again. And that's oh, fine. I, I I I'm sorry. They're both New Yorkers. It's that's all the same. Doing the, doing the you did that alt right lurch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Frank. And frankly, the one percent. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> number two. So uh, Bernie, or, Bernie 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 memes need to be Bernie. physically removed. Number three, which is actually potentially number one. I, I hate these memes more than fucking animal memes. And that is Occupy Democrats memes. And <laughs> being liberal, is, is the same, being liberal the same thing or does that come up later? No, it's different. Uh, well, being liberal, I don't I haven't seen them make specific memes. They make shitty posts. Uh, they shit posts. But the. Uh, yeah, and I I'm not. But most of the memes that they share are Occupy Democrats memes okay. or. Uh, just like stupid, like slap it together yourself memes, but they're indistinguishable from other liberal memes. Okay, U.S. on cut if they do have memes. Uh, but Occupy Democrats has branded and very distinct memes that are black and yellow, which is a, a microaggression, and it always features some quote from somebody that they think is important, and it's it's similar to Upworthy. And I, everybody who shares shit from Upworthy should also be physically removed, although that's not a meme, so I can't include it on this list. But the idea that you've annihilated somebody or completely destroyed their argument by saying something unrelated that like has emotional oomph or temporarily makes them look dumb is not complete annihilation. And saying, oh, hey, I've got a quote from Andy Borowitz, who's a shit comic, who's like the voice <laughs> of conventional wisdom now that Jay Leno's off the air. Like... <laughs> The, uh, the 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 comedian that your aunt listens to and thinks is funny is now Andy Borowitz of the Borowitz Report, and he sucks. And he starred on an Occupy Democrats meme today about how oh, and this is an original one. Donald Trump is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was good. I'm sorry. I, like I said, I'm I'm a sucker for bad memes. Where's my Lulbert's or Lolcat's folder? I'm sorry, I have to yeah. refresh. So anybody who oh. shares, who knowingly shares an Occupy Democrats meme, needs to be physically removed. Mm-hmm. And people who cr- who create the Occupy Democrats memes either need to be physically removed, or I want to shake their hand because they're the greatest trolls of all time. Yeah, there was uh, there was a there was well, one being liberal me- uh, meme. I remember that was getting like so infuriated about. There was like, uh, what was it? The uh, it was, they were talking about. Oh, the original tea protesters were originally like uh, liberals. Like oh yeah, like oh we am liberal, just like those crazy tea partiers that used to throw the tea in the Boston, Boston, uh, whatever. And I was like, you fucking yeah, we morons. go to tax revolts all the time. Yeah, you fucking idiots! Like, do you not understand that liberal like ha- hasn't is means something different in the United States 
in the last hundred years that it didn't mean like before then or in any other place in the world. Like if you go into Europe and say, like, I'm a liberal, they're going to be like, you right wing scumbag. <laughs> like, it, they, like it doesn't mean eight. the same thing, you fucking idiot. Anyways, I remember. Do you know how many times I've been called some variant of monkey or ape? Uh by a liberal person and like of all the people that cry racist all the time like to tell somebody who lives in north philadelphia that they're an ape is somehow acceptable i don't know yeah uh anyway that goes back into but, the animal meme again right yeah yeah right, right. exactly uh occupy democrats memes all need to be physically removed um yeah all right, it, that's you know it there's only three start, yeah yeah, we'll start there. If you just took away those three families of memes, the world would like. I can guarantee you things would be weird. We'd still have we'd still have problems here and there that would flare up. You'd get like celebrity memes and whatnot, and what have you, and things would get played out. Like taxation is theft. I think is a little played out. This no, way. that that was never played. It was not okay. It has to be good for it to be played out, right? Right, you have to you have to say it's, like okay, it's sliding sc- sliding scale. It's libertarians we're talking about. You can't expect them to have like advanced humor or anything like that. Right. Every libertarian that has advanced senses of humor is already a fucking host on this show. Yeah, there was a there was a meme that was going around on 4chan back in the day, and I can't remember. I think it was like the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, like re- like singing with his arm out, and the 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 thing was like you're supposed to say like when I was, and that was supposed to be like oh it was so funny, and it was just constantly just spammed on 4chan everybody hated it except for the people who were spamming it 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 was and it became a forced meme this is what it's going to be become a forced meme is never good never dank i think there was only one forced keep your memes consensual yeah there was only one forced uh forced meme that anybody will still remember really uh and and like that meme made me feel unsafe and that was desu and how when was the last time you heard anyone like talk about desu Never. I don't even know what meme you're referencing. Exactly. So maybe yeah. like some old school 4chaners, and that's about it. Sorry, force memes are bad, and taxation I don't support is a 4chan meme. as a verb, honestly. Yeah. I don't think that you could call someone a 4chaner or be 4chaning or any other use of 4chan as a verb. I'm but, sorry. But you could use Pollock, right? Would you accept Pollock? Uh, Pollock? As a verb? No. P- like poll? Like poll? P- slash poll? Pollock? No, you wouldn't? I wouldn't no like you're pollocking someone no or like don't For, pollock. I don't on think me. did I or say four channing? <laughs> yeah, I did. Four channing. Uh, oh, well, you God. said when well, I was a four channer. Oh, I was a four channer. Uh, yeah, yeah. For one who four tard. There you go. Ha- happy now. Somebody <laughs> asked me if I was a tard the other day, and I didn't know what they were talking about, and then they explained that it was related to four chan, and I yeah. said you have to ex- you have to understand. I'm not full edge lord. I'm only part. I'm only an edge lord up until the point where someone tells me that their joke made them feel unsafe. At which point, I declare it a victory. Mm-hmm. You know, a true edge lord would have someone declare. Would have somebody would say that joke made me feel unsafe, and then they would go into a physical, vis, a, like, really vivid description of how they're going to rape their kids or something <laughs> to like really like show them just how edgy they are. Uh, and that's not my style. You know, yeah. I want to offend them. Get, maybe get them to leave. That would be ideal. Uh, like, I want to offend you just to the point where you leave, but not to the point where you're, like, calling cops and, like, creating this, like, years-long grievance. Or Because I don't want to power your future shit. I just want to, like, power you out the door. You know, get <laughs> get you doing... Because the, there's this walk that people have when they, when they heckle a comedy show and then self-righteously leave. And it's this chest out... It's similar to a celebritarian walk at a, at a libertarian event. <laughs> uh, but like you got your chest out. Your chin is like kind of high and parallel to the floor. And you're walking in such a fashion that if you had a bolo tie on, it would hit both of your shoulders, like the tips, because <laughs> they'd just be swinging uh, so hard. But, yeah, you got that self-assured bringer of social justice gait that you walk with uh, as you walk out of the comedy show. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I've just done how, something for the future of humanity by shutting down jokes. Yeah, ha ha! the The world's a little more humorless because of me. You can all thank me later. <laughs> yep, yep. That's definitely the libertarian walk if I ever saw it. Like, I, pff, screw these people. I'm a god amongst men. If if it wasn't for me, that set liberty. They, you know, I it set liberty back twenty five hundred years or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, fuck you, nigger. By the way, please donate. <laughs> I'm actually not going to blank out that word, but I am going to blank out the more offensive word that you said earlier. It started with the C, and it's, it was not cunt. 
No. <laughs> I, I was like Occupy, Demo- yeah. <laughs> Occupy Democrats doesn't start with a C. Oh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> Clinton. Yeah. All right. Oh, and also, also any pro, any uh, I guess as a as one subversion of Occupy Democrats memes. Also, if you are a gay man who is posting a pro Hillary meme. Uh, that's basically to the effect of we need to vote for Hillary because she's a badass. Uh, <laughs> then you need to be physically removed, and I want to be the one doing the physical removal. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> next person who tells me that Hillary Clinton needs to be president because she's a famous woman who looks fierce in sunglasses needs to be put in a giant fucking catapult and thrown over Trump's wall. And I'm not an alt writer. I'm not. A, I'm not a big racist or anything like that. Uh, despite the fact that I just said the N-word really loud. <laughs> but uh, I, I was not despite, offended by that. I was I was very offended by the other word he said that started with a C. Uh, all right. Well, I'll apologize to you because I actually care how you feel. I'm oh, not trying to get you. you to do the, I'm not trying thank to get you, you to so do much. the heckler's walk out of the Lawbert's episode. <laughs> it would it would drag my whole computer because I'm still wearing my headphones. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm offended. And you just hear a loud crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> Cut. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, did you di- oh, I thought you died that. again. Sorry. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's Easter. It was. I got fiend droned, and then three days later, I'm back on the Walberts. <laughs> oh, how, that's how, what happened oh, how at things actual fall, Easter, right? Yeah. 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 Christ is dead, but Christ is risen, and Christ is the guest on a very special episode of. Professor CJ's Dangerous History podcast on Freedom Feeds tonight. Did you record a John for that yet? No. I okay. See, I just did it again. I used the word John. Uh, I need to stop doing this. John is a Philly word that means any noun, and I use it in casual conversation every day. And when I'm speaking to people not in the local Philadelphia area, they have no idea what that word means. So, mm-hmm. uh, like Lalberts, that's our word. Yeah, and I'll try not to use it to non Philadelphians. Yeah, I, I still use I still use seven, which is only like I think maybe ten people know what that means now. Uh, and I only, Michael, but and I'm not and I'm never going to explain it to anybody else. I'm done explaining it to what what it means to people. Uh, the ten people who know what it is will laugh, uh, and maybe ten more will figure out what what it means when I when I say seven about things. But that's about it. Um, I'm not going to explain it, and. I understand John, and the only reason why I understand John is because I, because you know, I've heard you say it many times. On I think you even said like I'll have a John with a John and extra John, please, or something along those lines. And I was yeah, like, I, to- I, said I that totally at the understood what you McDonald's. said. I totally understood yeah. what that meant. I totally understood yeah. what that meant because, you know, I, I'd never miss a fiends. Never miss a fiends. At at community at community college of Philadelphia, we had a tool salesman come in, and he was explaining all these tools that are available for purchase at the snap on student tool program. And, uh, he says unto me, uh, now this is going to amaze everybody in the room, but not every tool that we have for sale is called a John. And he was like 80 and Jewish. And I lost my shit laughing. Cause it's it's mainly like a it started off as like a, a a a young black men term like I learned I learned the I learned it from my students when I was teaching seventh grade because everything was a John yo Mr Miller we te- we handed the Johns in yo Mr Miller Mr Miller Mr Miller you got this John Mr Miller like and I was I was mono Miller back then this was before I had taken on the second Miller All right. uh, and yeah so everything was John this John that and then it entered my vocabulary and then once I stopped teaching I just kept saying John and everybody in Philadelphia says John up to and including old whites now so hmm. old Jewish old Jewish yep. Philly guys for, yeah. who old Jewish Philly tool salesman yeah okay yep close to death yep so uh are you got anything else or we're gonna close it out and tell people to buy bip strongs and yeah uh, buy John's uh, absolutely Absolutely, buy our Bip Strong Johns. Uh, they will cure all of your Johns that afflict you, mm-hmm. and and you'll uh, stand by that. Cl- you'll stand by that claim. Yeah, it'll, it'll cure remember all your cloud Johns. does not put out the sun. Okay, yeah, it will cure all of your Johns, and uh, if it doesn't, then these are not the Johns you are looking for. Yeah, no refunds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So just like just like Margaret Cho, uh, you're not getting a single cent of your fucking money back. Yeah. Uh, the same. 
with your big strong johns and if you uh definitely uh youtube margaret show on stage meltdown if you want to see a social justice warrior eat ass on a comedy stage <laughs> it is fantastic she's an artist uh, watching margaret show's comedic demise is one of the most beautiful things in life right now yeah and she she's a, an artist for bernie sanders isn't she she oh she's hardcore an artist for bernie sanders and uh she, yeah she fired her comedy writers because she's a comedian with writers and uh replaced her writers with activists and uh she's Ugh. bombed everywhere she's gone and she's going to be in town in two weeks and uh i haven't been specifically banned from the show yet but oh man uh do i have i've got some plans because i i know uh i know the person who handles the booking and i want one of the opening comedians to be like relatively offensive because it'd be best for everybody it mm -hmm. would give her something to talk about other than rape uh, it would give everybody in the crowd something to share, which is being offended by somebody, which is a sacrament to these people. And uh, he would he would get a whole bunch of new followers on social media from people wanting to denounce him by name, uh, whichever offensive comedian they choose. Mm -hmm. So this is a symbiotic relationship where I'm just meeting market demand. And yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. And it was a shame because I actually kind of liked Margaret Joe way back when. But not anymore. Oh God! Is it oh terrible? yeah, she used to be. She used yeah. to be hysterical. Yeah. But yeah, now it is all rape all the time, and <laughs> and ear rape. Yeah. The, the, but the she, video, so she's the basically kind of like Yoko it's Ono. Liberal, of comedy. It's liberals that walked out on her. It's yeah. liberals that walked out on her too. Oh, wow. It's people people that people that support her general like mission and shit like that that were at her show and they were just like, this is dog shit and it's not funny and I'm leaving. It was gay men that were denouncing her. And uh, when you're Margaret show, you're really fucking biting the hand that feeds you if gay men are walking out of your show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. Oh, oh shit. I totally, almost totally forgot. You can buy the Lulbert's flags at a discount now. You don't have to do all that process of sending them image files. Ugh, boring. You can buy them all. Uh, go to blackblock.com slash freedomfiend slash lulberts. This has got to be I, – I, I'm going to make a shorter link for it later. But if you go to Black Block and you go into the Freedom Fiends link, you'll see a lulbert section. And all of our flags, except for one and now two because we're not going to do the Loma Chomsky one because we're not lulberts, right? We're not lulberts anymore. We're going to change the show to uh, – I don't know the Ann Comptons or something. I don't, because that's what we are now. The Just, Ann Comptons. Yeah. That's hysterical. Uh, and we're and so, anyways. But you can buy our old stuff if you're still into that stuff. We need you need to you need to get on our level. Or, you know. Wage slavery is theft or something. Anyways, um, but yeah, you can just go there, buy all our flags. They're cheap as fuck, and they get, they get about big as what, like six by nine. If you want yeah, to they're huge. You could you could fuck. You could fly one outside your diner. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, and if you use the what is it the code? Uh, what is it? Oh, what the fuck is the code? I'm gonna put it in the show notes, but I'm gonna tell you wrong anyway. But I think it's um, free Bipcot. MWD colon. Yeah, MWD colon. It's free Bipcot, and they'll give you'll get a free. Uh, I think it's either a surgical mask. They get your. They'll choose for you, but it's a surgical mask or a mini Bipcot flag. The surgical masks are amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just got mine yesterday. I, I, sh I should have posted it on Facebook, but I didn't because I was too busy fighting Michael Dean. We were too busy having internal pod beef. <laughs> like, like, Yo, yeah. uh, do you want? I, I would say, do you want to team up, me and you, versus uh, Michael W. Dean and Lou Fiend? But then I thought about it in my head, and we'd probably lose. Yeah, we would probably lose, and probably wouldn't do Fiend <laughs> the Fiends anymore. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah, 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 we were so. having a little bit of beef, and I was just like, you know, what? I'm just not going to fight with you, Michael Dean. I just like you too much. Just, just leave me. If alone. it were, if it yeah. were Lou and Lisa, then I would say we could do it. Yeah. Because in the in the court of liberal Facebook opinion, we could always just claim to be a gay couple, and then we would automatically be right, oh, no yeah. matter what happened. Like, how dare you yeah. pose these these yeah. guys, you, this wonderful you, couple? You oppressed us, and they yeah. live so far away. Like, can you imagine the struggle they're going through? They can't even see each other. Like, oh my we're god, we're bi coastal because we're devoted. Yeah, <laughs> they're bisexual and bi coastal. Ugh, you're so fucking wrong i'm so boycotting you <laughs> I, I do the liberal valley girl too well though. <laughs> so yeah buy our shit buy our shit buy all of our shit buy our shit hashtag please donate and hashtag please don't vote yeah and don't do during notification yeah, yeah. tell, me, tell other people to do it just don't do it yourself don't legitimize yeah yep 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 Good show, man. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? 
Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, the, in this country, and in the most of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com. But we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.